Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series on a Thomas Wave to Dreamcast games. And today we're taking a look at Extreme Hunt. If you've ever been to any bar, you know the one arcade game that still exists out in the world if you don't go to an arcade are hunting games. Now you usually see Big Buck Hunter, but Sega and Sammy had their own series called Extreme Hunting. Before we get too far involved in shooting deer and bear, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined, we've got a Patreon link down there as well if you want to support the channel. But I have played an inordinate amount of arcade-like on shooting games. And because I live in Chicago and our native pastime here is drinking and eating, I have played a ton of hunting games in bars. And what I actually realized when I started playing this on my Dreamcast in the middle of the afternoon is apparently I am not very good at hunting light gun games if I have not been drinking. I just guess I only ever play them at bars. I remember one time I was in Brooklyn with my wife and one of my best friends, and we went to some bar and probably was drunk. I ended up shooting every single deer for an entire run of Big Buck Hunter, including getting a perfect finish on the bonus round. Clearly I'm not doing that good here. But the story is, these games are so prevalent. If you've ever been out to a bar, a pizza place, anywhere where people congregate, you're going to see hunting light gun games. And it's a really interesting subgenre of arcade light guns in general, because these seem to be the things that are hanging on the most. A company like Rothrills, whose games I don't really love, still have a gigantic presence in arcades. So to be able to have something like Extreme Hunting available to play at home on the Dreamcast is really awesome. Granted, it's not the most exciting game in the world. It's exactly what you think it is. Animals pop up, you need to shoot them in the right spots, and you need to avoid shooting the wrong things, just like you would a hostage in any other traditional light gun game. But the fun part about these is in the challenge. You can see I'm not starting out very good, but as you learn them more, it's a lot of fun because this is complete reflex. This isn't something like a light gun shooter I've shown like Total Vice or anything like that, where really you have a ton of time to shoot the enemies in front of you. This is quick blink and you miss it, action. And I really like that about light gun arcade games like this because they really do give you a lot of challenge and it really is just a fast reaction time sort of game. If you ever played the point blank games on PlayStation or in the arcades, you're gonna get the same concept and fun out of this. Now I don't love shooting rabbits because honestly they're one of my favorite animals, but as far as the game to play is concerned, it's a lot of fun to be able to have this on the Dreamcast because any more light gun games we can get, I'm definitely going to celebrate. There is a sequel to this and it isn't currently available for Dreamcast. I'm sure Megavolt 85 is working on it because it seems like he's going to get the entire library done at this point in time. But there is a sequel that does add some things that I would say is the better game. You'll see here as we go further around, we do get gun bonuses. Now we have a revolver with a scope, which I don't know if is what you would hunt with. I've never gone hunting with a revolver or really in general, but it seems to be working perfectly fine for this game right now. And I do love how you have to be patient in these type of hunting games. You have to wait for your shot and then you have to be ready to take it immediately. There's dough in the way, you don't want to shoot them or the round ends, but you really have to prime your shots up because we have four bullets and we need to really be accurate with those shots because you can end up shooting all your ammo off and just watching the end of the round go on without being able to do anything. Like there, I had no ammo, I couldn't do anything else. Now I will say the accuracy for my gun at least is very accurate on my PVM, but I have done some modification work that I will show in the future about how to make these guns more accurate and for the trigger to pull better. But your violage may vary because the Dreamcast is never known for being the most accurate system for light gun games. But honestly, if you miss your shot in this game, it's kind of could be that you missed it, not that the game was fighting you or their accuracy was off. This is a great type of game that you can play with friends. You can play this with up to four players. If you have four light guns, I would assume it works. I didn't test it, but I did test it with two light guns and competed against myself, dual wielding them. And honestly, I did okay. But what I did do just for fun is I had a few beers to see if I would do any better. And magically, I started getting slightly better. Now that might just be my imagination, but it's how I usually play when I'm out with friends. So I tried it at home and now magically I have hit all three deer. It was a scientific experiment because I want to bring you guys the most relevant information, so why not try to have a few? But I'll let you watch the next couple of rounds without me talking, and I'll be right back. Enjoy some of the deer sound effects. Reload. Reload. Need to go see the eye doctor. 
So what can I really say about extreme hunting that you can't get just by watching it in like three to four minutes outside of the fact that again, I also really like squirrels and I hate shooting them. This is just a really fun party game. And I love that these type of arcade games continue to exist because at least in North America, arcades are not doing so well. Yes, Chicago has some barcades and we got Logan Hardware, which is a barcade with some decent Japanese imports. And we got the Galloping Ghost out in the suburbs. But for the most part, arcades are dead if not dying in the US. But the these type of games keep them alive. They keep them in our public conscience because, like I said, pizza places, laundromats, bars. If you walk into a bar in Chicago, there's like a 50-50 chance you're going to see a hunting arcade game. And at least they're still existing because outside of that, there's only one bar that I know that's not a barcade that has any other arcade games in it, and that is a cabinet for Zaxxon. But short of that, it's just a fun genre. It's not so deep, but it is going to be fun. And if you get some friends together, have a few drinks and put this on your Dreamcast and go in front of the CRT, you can have a ton of fun. And that's what these games are all about. You get a bunch of your friends, you compete against each other for score, you have a good time, and it's always a great laugh. Now, I tested this on my original Dreamcast with an optical disc emulator on my PVM with my Interact Starfire light gun, and it worked perfectly fine. There is directions on how to calibrate them on the Dreamcast talk forums, and I will leave a link below. I also tested this in an emulator, Demule, and it emulates perfectly fine as well. You could use a Cinder light gun, you could use a mouse, whatever you really want to do. Granted, playing with a mouse would probably be a little bit unfair, but there's more ways that you can play these games. And at this point in time, three of the four light gun games for the Atomus Wave are home. And the only one we're waiting for is Extreme Hunting 2, which I do hope comes out because it adds a little bit more diversity to the game. But I love even in the end, just like Big Buck Hunter, you get these little bonus rounds just to kind of mix things up now and then. But this is the type of game, the more you play it, the better you get at it. And I'm pretty sure the more you drink, the better you get at it. And I just love being able to play these type of game. I grew up on them. And then when I started going out, I started seeing them. And I just really got into them. It's not as good as something like Confidential Mission for the Dreamcast or Virtual Cop 2 or House of the Dead 2. It's never going to compete with something like that. But as a fun diversion, it's great to have. And the fact that we're getting all of these Atomic Wave games on Dreamcast is still, to me, one of the best things to happen in 2020. 2021 even though it's been a terrible year so really it doesn't take much to take that top spot but short of that thanks so much for watching we will be back with another atomist wave to dreamcast game coming forward and then we'll have videos on friday sunday and tuesday as well if you have any questions or comments leave them down below if you need help getting these to run i'm happy to answer any questions you have and like i said earlier if you could do me a huge favor like and subscribe ring that notification bell definitely helps us out short of that that's extreme hunting you get to shoot some animals bye bye let's try that again Win!